Like I said, I'm a singer of Halcyon Way, and uh, I've been in this band for, gosh, I guess it's been about eight years now. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been singing for pretty much my whole life, and uh, I'm just happy to be able to kind of get a chance to do what I feel I was born to do, you know? I play a, a little guitar. I wouldn't call myself a guitar player, and when I was in, uh, I went to college as a vocal performance major, and I had to play piano. So, well, I wouldn't say I'm a piano player or a guitar player. I can, I can play a little of both. Um, I can usually the only thing I use it for, as far as writing, is sometimes uh, figuring out harmonies and stuff like that. I'll bang that out on the piano, but. Not really, no. I mean, it, it, usually the way the writing process goes, it, it, at least in house and way, is uh, John, our lead guitar player, will come up with kind of a riff and an idea, and then him and I will kind of work on it, grind through it, and get like a, a skeleton of where we think the song should go and how it should, you know, should flow, some vocal ideas, and then we bring it to the rest of the band, and then you know, everybody kind of puts their own spin on it and kind of, you know, makes it makes it a whole band and makes it sound like House Sam Way. John and I will get together and we'll we'll demo out stuff. You know, we'll go. He has a studio in his house, so we'll you know hop on Pro Tools and and demo all that out. And then we kind of start going through it at rehearsals and like pull it apart and you know then we can see kind of what works and what doesn't work. But uh, I mean, very rarely do do we do a lot of do we do stuff on the internet. Maybe sometimes to transfer, you know, to transfer files so people can work on it once it's ready to go. But overall, we we don't really have to use that. Everybody's in Atlanta, um, except for me. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. So they all get together weekly to uh, to write and to and and to practice. So. We're pumped about this album. Um, we've gotten great, some great reviews, and uh, we're just really happy with it. It's, it was a, I'll call it a labor of love. It, it was, it definitely, the writing process didn't come easy this time around because we really felt like we, we had some, some commercial success with our last album, Conquer. That you know, we, we were on the the Billboard Heat Seeker charts and stuff like that. So we're like. We really felt like we had to kind of, you know, progress and make something even better. So it was kind of like, it, it took us a little bit of time. And during that time, we went through two different managers. We got new management, and then we had to shop for a new label. And so it was a, it was kind of a long, a longer drawn out process than we would have wanted to. But I think that the end result is uh, really all that matters, you know. We had a we were signed to, to Alpha and Omega. Um, out of, I believe they're based in in Italy, but uh, and they had they did they were great to us. I mean they, they they did really good things for us and they really helped us out. But we needed somebody who had a little we felt really had a, a bigger pull in in the states. So uh, we were lucky enough to, to hook up with uh, Jeff Keller of the. Uh, Artery Agency, the Artery Foundation, um, and, you know, the rest is history. He was the one that helped us get, he orchestrated the deal with Agonia. So, but, so we, so we left our last manager. It wasn't, it was, uh, definitely on friendly terms. So your album comes out in a week. Uh, will there be any special editions with toys, poster flags that we recorded any bonus tracks? Will there be vinyl? There will be vinyl. Um, there is a special limited edition of a hundred red vinyl that are going out, and we'll also have vinyl uh, in you know traditional black. So that'll be cool. We have uh, our CD release show on August fourth in Nashville, and then August twenty fifth we'll be uh, having our CD release party in Atlanta. So as far as tours. We have 
we've gotten a bunch of offers to go back to Europe and to Russia. Um, just nothing has been – we haven't set it in stone yet. It's kind of like we're picking to see which is going to be the best bet for us. But uh, I would I would gather we will be out in September and October either in in Europe or the U.S. So, yeah, Jeff Tate's Operation Minecraft. Yep, we just got back to, uh, in April, and that was that was a great tour. That was that was a lot of fun. The guys in Angra were great. I uh, love the guys in in Operation Minecraft. We were all like one big dysfunctional family, the way it should be on tour, you know. So it was a it was it was a lot of fun. There's tons of mutual respect there, and uh, we'd love to do it again. You know. Did you uh, get a chance to get on stage with Jeff and Jam Smoking with him? No, no, I didn't. No, it was a uh, it was uh, the 30th anniversary of Operation Mindcrime. So they kind of blew through that. They, you know, they did that that whole album every night. So there really wasn't an opportunity. So I would have, uh, if he had asked me to, I would have, I would have jumped at that. That would have be, had been pretty cool. But Jeff was a super nice guy. You know, you can't listen to all the other hype that some people say that isn't hasn't isn't very friendly and stuff like that. He's super nice, and uh, we really enjoyed it. You know, I could see us going back out with with them again sometime in the in the near future. Definitely. And the but it was, album- uh, it was it was strange though when we first uh, heard we were going out with with that with Jeff Tate and Operation Mindcrime because we're we've toured with with Queensrÿche, so we were like that's going to seem strange. Now it's kind of like we've completed the package, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, and we're really we're really close with the Queensrÿche guys, so, so oh, it was awesome. kind of. It was kind of weird. Pretty much almost every tour we've ever been on, we've gotten up. And like uh, the last, uh, on this past tour with Angra, um, Raphael, their, their guitar, their lead guitar player, he got on stage and played with a, uh, one of our songs called Hatred Is My Cause. He played that song with us. And we, uh, we did uh, a cover of, it's called Stand Up and Shout. It was on the movie Rockstar. So we did that, and we had one of the guys from uh, um, Raven's Cry, which was the opening band, and then the guitar player of of Operation uh, Mindcrime, Kieran. He got up and played with us. So we all jammed that, and then uh, Anger brought everybody on stage, and we we did one of their songs. So it definitely still still goes on, and that's kind of a fun little you know last hurrah kind of kind of thing that goes on we've uh you know there's there's tour pranks that go that still go on and stuff like that so it's uh, a lot of camaraderie a lot of family you know uh well we did it with mark lewis and uh if you don't know who mark lewis is he has worked with trivium white chapel devil driver i mean he, he's he's a beast uh bad wolves he's a beast producer um and we went down and did basic basic drum tracks we did with him in Florida at uh, Audio Hammer. Uh-huh. Then uh, we came back and uh, we did guitars and bass and vocals at John, my my lead guitar player's studio. And then we we sent it back to him and he Mark actually moved to Nashville not too long ago so. He mixed it here in Nashville. But now, how did the cover art come about and uh, the title track choice? Well, all right. Uh, well, we've worked again with Travis Smith, who's done um, our last two albums and EP, and now this one. Um, and, of course, he's worked with, with tons of people, Nevermore and Soul Work, and he's done work with Metallica for art. And uh, it's just been... He was just a logical person, you know. When you when you have something that 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 works, and you ha- and you have a great working relationship, you figure, you know, we're not going to spoil this by trying something else. So we went with with him again. And he just killed it like he always does. 
I mean, he's at the top of his game as far as album uh, artwork and stuff like that. So uh, that that's why we 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 stuck with, we stuck with Travis because he's just he's the best. So why go anywhere else? But as far as like the the album itself, like how we came up with with Bloody Bone Valve, basically it's just way of it's a it's kind of a, like a like a cry that that no matter what knocks you down and what keeps you you know can keep you down, you you can come out that other side. And even though you're bloodied and beaten up, you come out you know stronger and better. So that's a, that's what we came up with the idea for the for the album. And if you've seen the artwork, you know it's it's our our nailhead guy. He's like our mascot, kind of like our version of the Iron Maiden Eddie. And uh, it's it's him, and he's he's beat up and bloody, but you see that he's holding a flower, and uh, kind of symbolizing like new life and birth and 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 growth and strength. No, no, no breasts. Oh, his. But uh, it actually, uh, they used to actually use silicon in uh, the making of uh, telephones. They don't anymore. But we got it, the idea from that. And basically what it's talking about is how, and we're all to blame, It's we're slaves to social media. Uh, you know, how many times have you been out in a at a restaurant and you look over and the family's all there and it's the mom and the dad and... Everybody is just just stuck on their phone, you know. Zombies. Yep. Yeah, they're not having conversations. In a fantasy world, hold on, my I just got in my car, so it might switch over. No worries. All right, I'm gonna put you back on the phone. Okay. Um, you know, we're so busy figuring out what everybody else is doing in social media that we we kind of lose track of reality, and we. We get, we don't live in the moment anymore, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the blame. I do that sometimes, you know. Sure. You're looking and seeing what's going on with your friends, and you're just not enjoying just being there. So that we wrote that song for, for like specifically that reason. Is how it's on way primarily self financed? Um, yes, primarily. We we do. Uh, our new label has actually put some money into us and gave us a little advance and um, has helped out with uh, help out with promotion and they they put a bunch of money in for promotion. But up to this point in our career, everything we've done has been uh, we've done by our, our with our own money and you know hope to make it back by selling lots of you know selling lots of records and lots of merch. So it's 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 been on our on our own shoulders, you know. But it also helps us to appreciate where we've come from because we've had the we've had to, to scratch and and claw our way each and every step of the way to get there, you know. As a small business owner, have you received have you noticed any tax relief within the last tax relief? Um yeah. I mean well, I mean yes and no. I mean you, you write off all your expenses, so I mean that definitely that definitely helps. It just you you can't consistently you know you can't show you always seem to spend more than you almost more than you make you know so you can't always show a you can't show a loss but <laughs> so but uh, yes I mean we we are able to get that as as a tax we we are able to get a tax break on some of that stuff but I mean it's it's tough because you know everybody is it's since it's self financed it's everybody else it's everybody's responsibility to kind of do their own taxes and but I mean I have gotten I have been able to to write stuff off and you know especially this year since we have recording we have you know promotion we're doing a lot you know we have our our management and stuff like that we are able to write that kind of stuff off so to me, it, it's 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 a way of life. It's kind of uh, it's an attitude, and it's everything. I mean, it's it's just part of it's part of it feels almost part of my DNA. You know, I live it and breathe it. So it's it. I love every type of music. I mean, it's my first love. There there's songs that I listen to and that you hear on the radio, and you 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 can be transported right back to the time when you first heard it. 
So, I mean, it's just so ingrained into my the DNA and, and who I am as, as a person that it means the world to me. It means life, almost, you know? <laughs> 